This is the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Arizona to be held August 2nd, 2022 at 6 p.m. at the Council Chambers Building. Um, if you'd take the roll call, please. Councilmember Henry is absent. Councilmember Hulse? Here. Councilmember Curat? Here. Councilmember Matthews? Here. Councilmember Wilden? Here. Vice Mayor Naren? Here. Mayor Olenski? Here. Thank you. If you'd all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay, next we have a brief summary of current events by the mayor, city council, and or city manager. The public body does not propose, discuss, deliberate, or take legal action on any matter brought up during the summary unless the specific matter is properly noticed for legal action. Any council members have anything? Mr. Mayor, do you have anything? No, not this time, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you, council member. Um, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Vice Mayor um, Matt Naren. Uh, the city um, staff has requested a qualifications for a construction manager at risk uh, for the design constructability review and the construction of the Cottonwood City Hall. Uh, we'll be holding pre-proposal meeting on August the 16th and statements of qualifications are due back by August the 25th. Um, CAT, Cottonwood Area Transit, did not go back to its four routes as planned due to COVID outbreak over at the Transit Center. Our transit manager will provide a notice when it is ready to return to the normal routes. Um, after, of course, once COVID has run its course. Currently, we have the manager and supervisor out with COVID and a couple of drivers are also ill. Not sure if it's COVID or not at this point. Um, one has returned after uh, his uh, protocols. Uh, there's also registration for the 20th annual uh, Cottonwood Cooler Golf Challenge hosted by the Greater Arizona Chamber of Commerce, Greater Cottonwood Chamber of Commerce. It will close tomorrow, August the 3rd. If you're interested in registering, visit cottonwoodchamberaz.org. Um, we also have registration is now open for the after school program organized by the Cottonwood Parks and Recreation Department. After school care will be offered weekdays and students will enjoy homework help, crafts, and a variety of activities. Contact Dana Dowell at 928-639-3200 for more information. The Cottonwood uh, Youth uh, Advisory Commission is currently seeking new members to join and help make a difference in their in our community. Applications being accepted through August the 12th and can be found online at cottonwoodaz.gov. And finally, join us for the final dive-in movie at the outdoor pool on Saturday, August the 20th. We will be enjoying the movie Finding Nemo and the entry fee is free with pizza available for purchase. Gates open, open at 745. Follow the Parts and Recreation Department on Facebook for any updates on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor. All right, next we have the call to the public. This portion of the agenda is set aside for the public to address the council regarding an item that is not listed on the agenda for discussion. However, the council cannot engage in discussion regarding any item that is not officially listed on the agenda for discussion and or action. And comments are limited to a three minute time period. Okay, and I do have one yellow slip. There are yellow slips in the back, so if there's anybody else from the public that would like to speak, please fill out a yellow slip for us. Thank you. And so we will be uh, calling up Ms. Jill Sh Schmitzgall. I hope I said that relatively well. Jill works just fine. Okay, Jill. Thank you. Uh, so I just had a one hundred percent one of the challenges here in Old Town and driving through and parking, not tonight, but <laughs> uh, most nights, especially on the weekends, there's a parking challenge. And I just wanted to have uh, everybody food for thought for that idea for a future. Um, I know it's not in the budget and it's not gonna go right away, but if there's maybe one of the lots back there can be turned into maybe a parking deck 
or we have a shuttle with off uh, parking for the area um, that could be shuttled in. I know we're probably not at that capacity here in Old Town yet, but maybe for events. Um, and also an idea, uh, and a, I hate to even mention this because I'm a resident around here. I don't work in Old Town, but if the employees could park elsewhere that that work at the, it'll open up a lot of parking also available to the, um, for Old Town to people to come in to go to the restaurants and everything. So that's just an idea, food for thought. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? And if not, we will close the floor to the public. Next, we have approval of minutes for the regular meeting of July 19th, 2022. And I'll move to approve those minutes. Second. Uh, Vice Mayor made the motion and Council Member Wilden seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, then we'll move on to unfinished business. We have uh, one item, ordinance number 716, amending designated sections of the city's zoning ordinance to allow public utility buildings, structures, or appurtenances as conditional uses under revised development standards, second and final reading. Vice Mayor um, and Council, there was no comments on this particular item. However, we do have Scott Ellis here available in case there's any questions for, for this particular item. Okay, no questions for me. Okay. All right, well, if there's no questions, is there any other uh, discussion that council would like to have? Good sure. I move to adopt ordinance 716, amending zoning ordinance sections 410, 411, 412, 413, 414, 415, 416, 425 and 428 to allow public utility facilities as conditional uses with revised flexible development standards. Second. Council Member Matthews made the motion and Council Member Wilden seconded it. Uh, roll call vote, please. Council Member Hulse? Yes. Council Member Curat? Yes. Council Member Matthews? Yes. Council Member Wilden? Yes. Vice Mayor Naren? Yes. Mayor Alinsky. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, then we will move on to the consent agenda. You want me to read the? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, please. Ordinance number 716, an ordinance of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Yavapai County, Arizona, amending the zoning ordinance by amending sections pertaining to conditional uses of public utility building structures or appurtenances. Thank you. All right, now we'll move on to the consent agenda. The following items are considered to be routine and non-controversial by the council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or a citizen so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. And I'll just read these out real quick. We've got um, item number one is Managed Information Technology Services Agreement with Cloud IT LLC. Item number two is resolution number 3145, appointing a member to the city's public safety personnel retirement system local board. And that seems to be all of the consent agenda items. Is there any item that a council member or a member of the public would like to have pulled? No. Okay, then I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Uh, Vice Mayor made the motion. Um, council member Karat seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and that will take us to new business. Item, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yes, resolution. if you'd read the resolution, please, by title only. Resolution number 3145, a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Yavapai County, Arizona, appointing Ron Collis, a member of the city's Public Safety Personnel Retirement System local board, and establishing his term of office. Okay. Madam Vice Mayor. Thank you. New business. The following items are for council discussion, consideration, and possible legal action. Item number one is interview of applicants for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Amanda Wilbur, HR Director. 
We have one vacancy on our planning and zoning commission currently. We advertised the positions and received two applications. So we have done the blind review already and both applicants, um, Elizabeth Marks and Robert Nelson are here to interview with you tonight. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Well, we will start with Elizabeth Marks then. Hello, council members, and thank you for allowing me to present in front of you tonight. And um, thank you for your patience. I was supposed to be here in June. Took a tumble down some stairs, had some issues, but here I am. I, I'm slightly familiar with issues, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's... we can talk. But um... but welcome tonight, Ms. Mark. So we just have uh, a few questions we're going to ask everybody. So um, we'll start with why do you want to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission? Uh, my husband and I moved up here um, part-time in 2018. Two years ago, after he retired, we moved up here full-time. I have really been keeping an eye on the growth in Cottonwood, and I'd like to be an integral part of that and support it and watch this town, uh, city grow even um, bigger than it has. There's a lot of opportunities here for people and business, and I'd like to be a part of that. Okay, and number two, what specific development experience do you have that qualifies you to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission? Um, back in Massachusetts, I was on the uh, Community Planning Division for the Department of Ed Massachusetts Department of Education. I uh, went out to, um, it's called the Southeast Corridor um, in Massachusetts and worked with um, several colleges, businesses, and um, uh, folks who really needed housing, education, et cetera. Um, worked with them doing um, focus groups, community interest groups, um, developed an assets and needs plan, and just continued from there. And um, the community grew, and, um, and then I came here. Okay. Um, what do you want to accomplish as a planning and zoning commissioner? Well, as I had mentioned, um, I see the growth in Cottonwood, and I'd like to see the continued growth and um, get to know the community much better than I have in the past two years and um, see some systemic change and opportunities for people with housing, homeless, education, parking. <laughs> okay. Um, does council have... Any additional questions for the applicant? Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Marks. I thank you. Not on my page. Do you have a different page than I do? Okay. <laughs> well, next then we will speak with Robert Nelson, please. Good evening. Good evening. Um, she's got way more experience than me, so I just <laughs> probably just call it a night. No, thank you so much for allowing me to come and speak with you tonight. Appreciate it. And thank you for your help on the email. And thank you for being here. Sure. So we're sure. just going to ask you the same questions we asked her. Okay. So why do you want to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission? So uh, my wife and I moved here about uh, nine months ago from the suburb of Los Angeles, California. Thank goodness we got out. And, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, I have a lot of municipal experience. I worked over 35 years in federal and uh, city governments um, as a civil engineer and an architect at LA Unified School District as an architect. So um, I kind of get what you guys do, uh, especially with the cities. I was more on the execution side in public works than in the planning side. So I thought, you know, there's an opportunity, so maybe I can maybe help out with the planning side for a bit. Okay. What specific development experience do you have that qualifies you to serve on the Planning and Zoning Commission? So over 35 years in public government uh, as a project manager, uh, we built 200 schools in L.A. I was a project manager in the architecture com com component of it. Um, 
So I've, I've built everything from skate parks to aquatic centers to schools. The best project was a skate park for the little guys. You know, we brought a skate park in and everybody said skaters are the bad part of it. So you build them a skate park and then they were the best kids in the world. Um, so yeah, I have quite a bit of experience in uh, project management, uh, project development, but again, always on the execution side, never on the planning side. Okay. And what do you want to accomplish as a planning and zoning commissioner? Um, I'm not moving again. That was, <laughs> that was a really bad experience. Luckily, my wife still is my wife. Um, so we're going to stay here. We're not moving. And I just want to uh, give something back to the new community um, that uh, I think I can bring some experience, some culture. Um, she has way more uh, agenda items and I do I just want to help out with the community and see if I can uh, make a little bit of a difference with my experience okay does council have any additional questions for mr. Nelson no all right well thank you okay thank you have a nice night Then we will move on to item number two, resolution number 3144, minor general plan amendment. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Vice Mayor, Council, uh, Scott Ellis, Community Development Director. This resolution is for a minor general plan amendment that uh, is required for the item following this on the agenda for the rezone to community facility that we proposed mm -hmm. first reading at the last meeting. There's two parcels, one owned by Cottonwood Oak Creek School District and one owned by Mingus Union High School. This is more of a formality so that the land use map matches what the zoning is. Um, with that being said, I can answer any questions on that. All right, Council, do we have any questions? No. We haven't had any comments or questions or anything from our end as well from citizens okay. mm -hmm. yeah, it seems pretty straightforward to me too i move certainly i move to approve resolution 3144 second council member wilden uh made the motion and council member cross seconded it a roll call vote please council member halls yes council member cura Yes. Councilmember Matthews? Yes. Councilmember Wilden? Yes. Vice Mayor Nairn? Yes. Mayor Alinsky? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. So would you please read resolution number 3144 by title only? Resolution number 3144, a resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Yavapai County, Arizona, approving a minor amendment to the city's general plan, changing the land use designation of a parcel of land located on the west side of Quail Trail, approximately 700 feet north of Mingus Avenue, from residential low density to public, semi-public, institutional, in a parcel of land located at the southeast corner of First Street and Camino Real, from general commercial to public, semi-public, institutional. Madam Vice Mayor. Thank you. All right, item number three is ordinance number 715 amending the zoning map of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona for approximately 93 acres of land owned by the city, Yavapai County and local school districts. From the current zoning designations of R1, R3, AR20 and CO, formerly county zoning, to CF, community facility, second and final reading. Madam Vice Mayor Council, again, there's been no comments, questions, any concerns on this one since the first reading. Okay, any questions from council? No. Okay. I move to adopt ordinance 715. Second. Council member Wilden made the motion and council member Karat seconded it. A roll call vote, please. Council member Hulse? Yes. Council member Curat? Yes. Council member Matthews? Yes. Council member Wilden? Yes. Vice Mayor Naren? Yes. Mayor Linsky? Motion carried. Okay. And then do you read the ordinances too? So if you'd please read ordinance 715. 
Ordinance number 715, an ordinance of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Yavapai County, Arizona, amending the zoning map of the City of Cottonwood, Arizona, for approximately 93 acres of land owned by the City, Yavapai County, and local school districts from the current zoning designations of R1, R3, AR20, and CO, former county zoning, to CF community facility. Madam Vice Mayor. Thank you. Item number four is professional services agreement with last architects for design of a new city hall and other related professional services. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor, or Madam Vice Mayor, <laughs> Mayor, members of council. My name is David Hausman. I'm the public works director for the city of Conwood. Uh, tonight I have a presentation um, for consideration and approval of a design contract with Last Architects for the design of the new City Hall facility uh, for a not to exceed fee of $1,388,794. On September 21st, 2021, Council approved the purchase of a building located at 635 North Main Street, formerly known as Rough Cut, for completion and build out of the new City Hall. A request for qualifications was issued for the design of the new city hall and seven architectural, architectural firms responded with statements of qualifications. A selection committee made up of city staff and one outside local contractor ranked the submittals based on qualifications. The top four ranked firms were selected to be interviewed. The same committee interviewed the four firms and based on the combination of the SOQ scores as well as the interview scores, last architects was invited to submit a proposal for the design of the new city hall. The fee proposal, which is within your packets, was negotiated between city staff and last architects, along with their team of subconsultants for, com for complete design um, deliverables. So the proposed services included uh, the following phases. So we have um, project administration and coordination, space planning and programming, conceptual design, schematic design, design development, construction documents and specifications, construction administration, and furniture fixtures and equipment, um, also known as uh, FF&E. So this is a full service agreement which includes all construction plans and specifications for all building systems. Within the current proposal, it is estimated to be completed within 51 weeks following the notice to proceed. Also, I have with me tonight uh, Brad Ling and Justin Trexler with uh, Last Architects. I'd love to have them come up here and introduce themselves as well as answer any questions council may have. Okay. Um, does council have any questions for Mr. Hausman? Yes, I do. Um, where did they fall among, or where was the second um, bid come in? Was it higher, lower, close, or where did it, that It fall? was really close. Um, and they're not bids, they're statement of qualification. So what we do is we score um, applicants um, on the SOQs of what they submit in a package. Um, we then ranked the top four. We brought the top four in and we, we sat down as a panel and interviewed them. Um, they, they presented a, a presentation. We had questions for them. Um, each member uh, ranked them and then we ranked them in an order. This is not a fair question. <laughs> why, why were they selected in your opinion? Uh, we, uh, my opinion, uh, they were selected because they were the most qualified uh, applicant who submitted um, in regards to their experience, um, their past work performance that they've done, um, working on city halls and like facilities, um, definitely the most qualified applicant. And, and, and the whole uh, committee felt that way. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Hauseman? Yeah. Okay, well then we will let the other gentlemen introduce themselves. Hi, Vice Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Brad Lang. I am the principal and co-founder of Last Architects, and we were very excited and ecstatic to be chosen to be your design architect for your new city hall. Like Mr. Hausman said, we come to you with many years of experience, many projects in our past portfolios of success at the civic and public realms and we are ready to get started on your project. Um, it's going to be an, an amazing facility. And happy to answer any questions you have of okay. us. Okay. Okay. So, and this is for staff and, and for you also. So it, it does say the fee is not to exceed uh, $1,388,000 and change. Does that mean it could come in less? Or is that, 
Is that the price? That is the price. Okay. So, and looking at the scope of work, um, you've got certain things on like two trips out for this, three trips out for that. If you exceed that, can we expect to be billed extra for those things? For trips out, yes. Some of our sub consultants do have limits on their travel. Um, I don't believe the architects, us last architects, have a limit on our travel per se, but some of our sub consultants do. Okay, so I mean, you essentially looked at all this in detail, and, and you're you're quite confident. Everybody's confident, staff included, that we're we're probably not going to get into a position and exceed those numbers. Then to sneak those, no. Exceed, yeah. Oh, exceed, no. The, the only provisions for that fee going up is if the scope of work were to change. If you were to add or take away a part of the project, then yes, the fee could be reduced. Thank you. Where are you located? We are based in Phoenix, Arizona. Second question, what's the closest project you've worked on that's going to be similar to this one? So our team has worked on, I would say the closest would be um, the City Hall in Surprise, correct? Yeah. The City Hall in Surprise would probably be the closest programmatically okay. to this project. Um, we have spent, again, my business partner, Eric, who will be the project archi or design architect, our interior designer, who is also going on to be on the team as well, aren't joining us today, but their portfolios, all of our portfolios, have been spent in the civic public campus realm. So we are very familiar with working with projects of this scale, this size, this complexity of these budgets designed to, um, to last a very long time. I'm, I'm familiar with Surprise uh, Project. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, did you go over or under budget or come right in or how did you do on that one? I personally did not work on that project, okay. so I, I, I don't want to speculate. Sure. Could you get, gap, get back to me on that, just FYI? Yes, okay. not a problem. Okay, any other questions from council? Well, I, I think you guys answered the things I was wondering, or asked what I was wondering as well. I know we've been, we've taken a long time to get here to decide to purchase a building and do a city hall. So. I know I'm very excited about getting started. So thank you both for coming and talking to us tonight. Yes, of course. Take a motion. Sure. I move to approve the proposed contract with Last Architects for the design of the new city hall and other related professional services for a not to exceed fee of $1,388,794. Second. Councilmember Matthews made the motion and Councilmember Wilden seconded it. A roll call vote, please. Councilmember Hulse? Yes. Councilmember Curat? Yes. Councilmember Matthews? Yes. Councilmember Wilden? Yes. Vice Mayor Naren? Yes. Mayor Alinsky? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, item number six is resolution number 3143 declaring the city's official intent to reimburse itself from the proceeds of future debt obligations for expenses incurred in connection with the completion and build out of the building located at 635 North Main Street for use as a new city hall. Madam Vice Mayor, we're on item five, sorry. Uh, did I miss one? I'm sorry, let's go back. Item number five. That means I have to say that all again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Item number five, professional services agreement with point engineers for design services for Main Street improvements. Thank Good you. Evening, Madam Vice Mayor, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, tonight I present to you a proposed agreement with point engineers for the design of uh, Main Street improvements. Uh, back in January, uh, work on Main Street was identified as a priority and a possibility with City Council. Uh, following that retreat, staff issued a request for qualifications for Main Street Design Services. Uh, we received four qualified uh, statements of qualifications and they were ranked by a review panel. Uh, based on that review, the highest proposer was Point Engineers to design uh, Main Street improvements from the city limits on the north end near Gray Fox Ridge to uh, where we tie in with State Route 89A at Cottonwood Street. Uh, 
So scope of this work includes everything needed for pavement investigation for the existing, pavement replacement. We're looking at uh, lighting at the crosswalks. We're looking at utilities, uh, drainage, and one of the big components of this because of the scope of the pavement is the uh, ADA improvements, which is the Americans with Disabilities requirements that we have to upgrade and bring to current standards, all those features. <coughs> So this project will deliver actually two construction sets of plans and deliverables, one being the, the pavement from Gray Fox city limits to uh, State Route 89A, and the other looks at intersection improvements with Main Street and 10th Street, which is an offset intersection. The engineer will look at uh, options for that, including uh, realignment and a roundabout there. So, the, uh, the amount of that agreement is not to exceed, again, $564,711. And I'm here to answer any questions you might have. With City Hall going in around 10th, there's going to have to be something there, I would suspect. So you said they're going to look at it, or how's that going to work? So first task in that intersection would be to evaluate options. Can we realign that, get it lined up to where it functions better since that intersection is offset? Uh, second would be once they determine what the best course of action there is, they would design those improvements. They would deliver those construction plans to us as a separate document. We could bid them both at the same time. We could bid them separately depending on schedule and, and direction of, of council. So that's included. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I think that answered my question. You're, this is going to be part of that, right? That whatever we're going to do with that intersection. The, the design and construction documents will be included. Okay. And it'll be executed at the same time we do the rest of it. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Madam Vice Mayor, if I may. Of course. Can, I, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to um, make sure that there's another intersection that we look at, which is, uh, I know we, we plan to look at some traffic, traffic calming features for the North Willard uh, intersection on the other end of Old Town. But I just want to make sure that that's going to be included in the scope of work. And then the other point I wanted to make is when we do plan for lighting or any other uh, uh, sign, signage improvements along that corridor, that we remember that's our arts, culture, and entertainment district. So I'd like to see us try to incorporate at least some thematic elements to Old Town to whatever um, you know, lighting or signage that we approved along that corridor. So we, we try to meet the district in with Old Town. Thank you. Uh, to answer your question, Mr. Linsky, Mayor Linsky, North Willard is part of this design. They will look at options to provide some traffic calming on that traffic coming into Old Town from the Clarkdale side, potentially having a, a turnaround there for traffic that wants to turn around back to Old Town, or uh, you know, potentially, I don't wanna say roundabout, but you know, something with the, the amount of real estate that we have there, we could do something that would allow traffic to turn around and also slow down that traffic coming in from Clarkdale. As far as the lighting goes in, in Old Town and, and beyond, there's nothing in that scope right now that provides for additional electrical service, lighting design, uh, any extension of that old town uh, nature uh, from beyond where it exists already. The only lighting included would be at intersections and at the crosswalks where we currently have the, the flashing uh, lights for the, the crosswalks from Mingus on south. Okay, any other okay, questions? Thanks, uh, Mr. Brimble. It, it, it answers my questions. I just, uh, again, if there's an opportunity, if we are buying, uh, you know, light poles that we just try to, again, continue with that same theme so that it is apparent to separate district uh, for the rest of the conference. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, we will bring to work sessions the design as it progresses and everyone will have a, an opportunity to take a look at it. Okay. Any other questions? 
Okay. Well, then I will move to approve and award the proposed contract for Main Street Design Services to Point Engineers for a not to exceed fee of $564,711. Second. The Vice Mayor made the motion and Council Member Matthew seconded it. A roll call vote, please. Council Member Curat? Yes. Council Member Matthews? Yes. Council Vice Mayor Nair? Yes. Council Member Wilden? Yes. Mayor Alinsky? I've got a, yes. out of order. Council Member <laughs> Halls? <laughs> yes. Motion carried. Well, as long as you get to all of us, I think that's all that matters. Okay, thank you. Now we're on to number six. Resolution number 3143, declaring the city's official intent to reimburse itself from the proceeds of future debt obligations for expenses incurred in connection with the completion and build out of the building located at 635 North Main Street for use as a new city hall. Yes, uh, Vice Mayor Naren. Uh, what we have before us, and we've done this five times in the last 20 plus years that we've been around, that Kirsten and I have been around at least. <laughs> uh, all this is is a backstop in case we decide to go ahead and finance any of the portion of the, um, the new city hall construction. Uh, because we're, we're funding a lot of it up front, uh, we wanna make sure that if there's any issues in the future uh, with finances or uh, revenues uh, streams, we want to make sure that if council decides to go ahead and, and um, fi finance any portion, it can also reimburse itself for any monies that it has already inputted into the kind to uh, the particular project. It's just a backstop. Okay. That sounds like a good option to keep open. Mm -hmm. Any questions or discussion from council? Okay. Motion. Sure. I move to approve resolution 3143. Second. Council Member Matthews made the motion and Council Member Karat seconded it. Uh, roll call vote, please. Council Member Hulse? Yes. Council Member Curat? Yes. Council Member Matthews? Yes. Council Member Wilden? Yes. Vice Mayor Naren? Yes. Mayor Linsky? Yes. Motion carried. And if you would please read resolution number 3143 by title only. Resolution number 3143, a resolution of the mayor and city council of the city of Cottonwood, Arizona, declaring for purposes of section 1.150-2 of the federal, Treasure, federal treasury regulations official intent to be reimbursed in connection with certain capital expenditures relating to the build out of the building located at 635 North Main Street, Cottonwood, Arizona, for use as a new city hall office complex. Madam Vice Mayor. Thank you. Okay, um, so item number seven is discussion of possible legal action regarding the city's prosecution code enforcement services contract. That goes along with um, the next item on the list for executive session that says pursuant to ARS 38431.03 03A3 and or A4, the council may vote to convene an executive session to consult with the city attorney and staff regarding the city's prosecution and code enforcement contract and services and related matters and provide direction to staff regarding those matters. So I will move to uh, resolve into go into executive session. Second. Vice Mayor made the motion. Council Member Wilden seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. 